Hello and welcome to another Clip Studio Paint tutorial. In this occasion, I will show you how to create a simple cartoon robot. I will use some useful functions of Clip Studio Paint EX, and also I will prepare the illustration to create a simple animation. For the initial concept phase, I start exploring shapes and silhouettes. I'll try to focus on the overall feeling of the characters instead of the details. In this instance, I like to use a big texture brush to quickly try different designs. First, as always, look for reference and inspiration. Research real-life robots and machines, how they work, and get inspiration from nature. If you want inspiring robot work, I recommend Da Costa Bailey, the creator of March of Robots. Explore as many different shapes as you want to convey the feeling of the robot you imagine. For instance, if it's a war menacing robot, you can try a triangular shape with sharp angles. Use squares to convey a strong, stable feeling or oval shapes to make a more friendly character. Imagine the character personality and function. This will define the overall shape and concept. How does the robot work? What joints does it have? Is it big or is it small? The more details you define before drawing, the easier it will be to make design choices. I decided to work in a cartoon robot with a friendly silhouette. To refine the design, create a new layer above the silhouette and lower the opacity. Then, with a pencil brush, I start defining the shapes and the details. I imagine how the robot is constructed, how the shapes overlap and the joints. Since this is a cartoon robot, it is in critical if the joints aren't perfect, but I still take into consideration the movement since I will animate the character. Take your time in this stage to refine the design before coloring. Play with different amounts of detail to achieve a good balance. Relax and experiment. Here's my final sketch. I went with a tube arm design to make it easy to animate. I added some paneling and details I will make glow in the coloring stage. To prepare the inking stage, lower the sketch opacity. Then, since I want to animate this character, I will create folders for each part of the robot. One for the head, one for the body, and one for the legs. I will leave the arms alone for now. Then, I create a new vector layer inside the head folder. I name it for organization. Since this is a mechanical design, I will link it using vector layers and the Curvesier tool. I can draw the lines with the Curve tool, then modify them with the Operation tool or the Control Point tool. This way I can get smooth and consistent lines. With the vector layers I can modify the size of the brush even after drawing the lines. If you want to learn more about the Curvesier, I have a tutorial, so give it a look if you want. I go around the sketch, defining the lines, and I also use the Pen tool to add details and line variation. Of course, this is my workflow, you can use any tool you prefer. Just get good line variation and, if possible, clear the fine shapes. When I finish the lines, I rasterize the layer. Then I create a new raster layer behind the lines to prepare the base for the colors. To create a mask, I define the ink layer as a reference layer. Then I select the base color layer. Using the marquee select tool, I create a selection around the head. Then fill it with a color. Finally, use the bucket tool Enable referencing from the reference layer, pick transparent color and click outside the lines to remove the excess. I defined a simple color palette, then I create a new layer above the base color and create a clipping mask. Using the fill tools you prefer, find the local color of the different parts of the head. Try to create an interesting balance between the colors. Create a new layer and set it to multiply blending mode. Lower the opacity 
and also clip it to the layer below. Then start painting the shadows. Try to define a light source. In this case, I'm using a combination of a soft round brush and a texture brush to achieve the details I want in the shadows. Keep in mind the overlapping areas and the panel lines. Finally, I created a new multiply layer and added another layer of shadows on top. I added a rust texture behind the shadows, set it to soft light and lower the opacity for an overall texture. Then I duplicate the layer, set it to multiply, play with the opacity and then holding Alt, click the layer mask button to create a transparent mask. I used a texture brush to paint a small rust detail. Create a new layer and set it to add glow. Then just paint the light parts and small details. Create a new layer and paint the glowing parts with a soft brush. Set the layer to add glow, then create a layer for the eyes in glow mode to add more contrast. Finally, set the head folder into the true blending mode. Copy the layer structure into the body folder and repeat the same workflow to paint it. Create a text layer to add a number and press Ctrl T to free transform it, then place it into position and play with the blending mode and opacity. Repeat the same steps to paint the legs and also I added a small detail in the head. Now we have the three parts independent of each other. Now let's prepare the arms. For the arms I will show you a cool tip to make the arms possible by creating a special ribbon brush. First I Duplicate the sketch layer, then isolate the arm. Using Ctrl T for free transform, I modify the sketch to make it horizontal, then delete some parts. With the sketch, I draw three tubes parts. I duplicate the sketch, place it uh, on the side and modify the lines to make it tileable. Prepare the layer structure to ink and color the tubes. To make things easier, I create a symmetry ruler and ink the tubes with the symmetry. Ink the tubes and add detail, checking that the tubes are tileable. We paint the tubes the same way we painted the other parts. This time we check that the parts are tileable by creating duplicates. Duplicate the folder, then merge it. Then, using the Marquee Select tool, just copy the part that is tileable. Apply the same process in the hand. I copy the right part of the tileable tube to make sure the hand connects with the tube. Group the two layers, then create a new file object from the group. Open the file object, then control click the hand to create a selection. Then with the marquee select tool, make sure the selection goes to the edge of the canvas. Go to edit, register material as image, then name the brush, select use for brush tip shape and place it inside a category. Repeat the steps for the tool, then select a ribbon brush and change the tip. First place the hand and then the tube. Make sure ribbon is selected in a stroke and repeat method set to none. Go back to the main file and with the full color brush selected we are going to create the arms. Create a new vector layer and we have a full color detail brush. We draw the arm in the vector layer, then we can add points 
with the operation tool we can move it, extend the points, change the curve, etc. Find the proper brush size and select a pose for the arm. Then duplicate the layer and repeat the steps for the other one. Set the other arm on top, pose it and create a layer mask to make the joint seamless. As you can see, it's a really cool tip to make possible arms and I will use it to make a simple animation too. This is my final result. We went from the shape to a sketch, then to color. I painted a simple background to create the ambience for the animation. To make this simple animation, I make sure I have a timeline of 24 frames per second. We separated the parts, so it's really easy to create keyframe animations. I define a two second loop in the timeline, then I group all the parts except the legs, enable keyframes for the folder, and then I will add three position keyframes. Change the position in the middle keyframe, move the folder down to create a breathe loop. Then disable the keyframes in the group to modify the inner layers. I will add a similar effect but to the glow layers in the head and in the body using opacity. Three simple keyframes we start adding life to our character. To create the appearance of a battery loading, I animate the mask in the hard container. That's pretty much it. This kind of animation is really straightforward. Now we're going to animate the arms. To animate the arms, create a new animation folder, then insert the arm layer inside. Create a duplicate of the arm and place it two frames after the first one. Then, using the operation tool, modify the, the vector to create an animation. Keep the same process, duplicate the last layer, assign the copy to a new frame and modify the vector. Keep adding frames until the arm points forward. Then create a new frame and place it in the middle. Modify the vector, adding points to create a curve that go past the screen. Then apply the inverse process as before, duplicate the layer and delete parts to create the motion. Try to create a smooth animation, use the onion skin if you need. When the animation is done, go to the animation menu, edit track, rename by timeline order. Then, to create the inverse motion, go to batch specified cells and set the last frame as the first one and make sure the timeline is set on 2 and that's the final animation. I hope you can learn some tricks from this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.